I'm Evan Lazarus, Chief Knowledge Officer for T3Live.com. You don't become a great trader by watching videos and taking courses. You become a great trader through live screen time. Accelerate that learning curve by tapping into the experience of seasoned professionals. Currently, we're offering five-day free trials to each of our four mentoring rooms. In the mentoring rooms, we teach our strategies in the context of the live market. To sign up for a free trial, go to the T3Live education page, fill out the form, and get started when the next trading session begins. We hope to see you in one of our mentoring rooms. World markets are red across the board as the Cyprus bailout brings potential new risks. The euro is at a three-month low against the dollar. Are the markets pulling in after last week's extended rally? I'm Brittany Umar, and the morning call starts right now. Good morning. My name is Scott Rudler, Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. And I'm Brittany Umar, and together we bring you Morning Call. So futures are falling this morning following news of a bailout deal with Cyprus. Now, Scott, what, are you, what is your take on this news? Well, the first take on it, and the real reason why we're down, is because it's something different. It's a different type of bailout. We've been seeing bailouts for the past few years, and we've talked about them. And finally, this is one that has a little different feel where they're actually taxing the you know, the, the savers or the taxing the people that had their funds in the bank and they're not being insured. So I think that's what people are obsessing over. I think that's what everyone's going to be talking about in the headlines because like, okay, you know, if you have your money in one of these peripheral sovereign nation banks, why would you keep it there if all of a sudden you could wake up and get a 10% tax levy, levied on you? So I think that's, the, that's what's being talked about, about being different. But, but overall, I just think that, you know, Germany and some of the stronger, um, you know, nations, so to speak, you know, they, they want to put some penalties out there. If your country is, is a haven for, you know, whether, you know, they talk about Russian laundering or this or that, whatever it is, you know, there's going to be some type of ramifications if you need a bailout, not just, you know, some austerity rules. So in a way, I think it, it's something that we're going to have to deal with and get used to, but I think it could overall lead to a more accountable European Union. Now, were there any signs we could have picked up on that this was brewing? <laughs> it's funny because all the bears out there are like beating their chest like they've been right and this is what they were expecting and you couldn't expect this. Right. But what we did see last week is that last week, you know, the markets were a bit overbought, right? Every day you would turn on the TV said you do hear, oh, another Dow record. Oh, we're up now seven out of seven days, eight out of eight days, nine out of 10 days. You know, you're always in that type of environment. You want to trim and trail. You want to sell some excitement. You want to, you know, trim some of your profits to keep it. But then you also want to stay with some of your stocks for that trend to continue. Now we've been in a strong trend, you know, just say even from from almost two years ago, or you can even say since the the bottom of the financial crisis, we've been in a strong trend. But recently, you know, since the start of 2013, you know, the market's been in a confirmed somewhat rally, except for that little Italian fiasco. So, you know, if you trim too much early, then you're not riding your winners out. So if you're left with some longs on like I am at like nine longs and one short, today might be complicated, but you did the right thing. You, you followed the trend and, and with volatility, it's going to create opportunity. All right. So coming in today with nine longs and one short, how do you plan on handling things on an intermediate time frame? Well, first, let's take a look at the chart of the S&P. You go to the, the daily chart of the SPX, you will see that this was your two-day move to start the year. Okay, and then we hovered above, you know, what's it called, this downtrend. We took out 1474. Fast forward, this was our first uh, volatility type of scenario when the Italian, uh, you know, elections brought out the bears. So what do we do? We broke the, you know, the eighth day, we broke the 21 day, and then we finally bottomed with the small red dog reversal on, what was that, March uh, 6th or 7th. But from the high here, you had, you know, 1530 was the high, the low was 1485. So what is that? 45 handles. That was your entire correction. And it happened pretty swiftly. So I remember getting down to very small amount of positions, almost, I think, net short into this day. Back into this day, went back to maybe two, three longs. And by the time we were holding higher, it was back to seven to nine. So here we are on our way up. You know, but you know, besides just you know, the, the no real, real follow through into some good economic news last week, there was really not that many signs. Okay, but you know, here we are. This is the eight day, which we're going to be opening below, and then here's some decent support. This is 15.40. Your 21 days, 15.34. This pivot break, I was 1525. So I think there's some decent support into this 1525 to 1534. So the question is today, you know, what happens? You know, we're gapping down, I think 14, 15 handles. So the real question is, do we close down 30 or do we close down seven or eight? And that's what guys like me are gonna have to figure out. So either I'm gonna have to salvage some positions I don't feel like dealing with, maybe even find some new positions because there could be some things that show relative strength and go green. 
And I think my biggest question is I'm coming in short the spiders. What do you do? Do you cover your spiders or a majority of them on the open? Or do you double, triple them up saying we're going to, you know, double the amount of losses throughout the course of the day? But that's all going to happen within the first hour or two to see the complexion. And that's how I'm going to deal with it. Well, we know that volatility creates opportunity. So let's check the temperature across sectors and see where some opportunity might lie today. And let's start with the banks. Could this Cyprus news weigh on our banking system? We shall see. Some might think that now our bank system even, is even more of a safe haven because we have all these rules in place. We have FDIC, we have some other things, which they have a, 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 something like it, but it's never the same. So if you look at the XLF, you will see it's had a big run. You know, during this corrective phase, it wound up breaking the 8 and the 21 and held the 50 day. You know, the 50 day for the XLF is all the way down here. So, you know, if you if you wanted to have a high level stop and you, and you think that we're going to you know, get that type of move like we saw back here, you know, this is your this is your spot. So I would write down for the XLF, the, the 21 day is 1803. Use that as an area since we'll be opening below the eight day. So 1803, I would think, is a, is a decent spot. It also almost correlates to this last breakout pivot. And this will be a spot that at least if you are short, you know, look to cover and then see if we see some kind of relative strength. So this would be, you know, an area that the bulls would, might try and protect. But this is the same moving average that we wound up touching the last time we had a corrective phase. But overall, look at this move we've had. So, you know, this type of move could be welcomed. All right. And the industrials as well had helped to lead the market higher. The XLI put in a new all-time high on Thursday. So should we expect momentum to remain intact there? It's going to be the same, same old, same old. Every time you get into a little bit of a corrective phase, you want to see what sectors act best. That shows you where money's going, and that's 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 what technicians see. You you see where the relative strength is. So the next time we do uh, start a, a new um, move to the upside, you know where your money is best suited. So if you look here at the industrials, you know it too has been trending higher. This is that prior pivot coming in right around here, right around the you know the 21 day. So write that down. This is you know. Key support if this retracement is fast and furious and doesn't go deep, this is going to be a good spot to at least cover some shorts. And then again, you know, here is your 50 day. So this is what you probably need to do on every sector is, is see where the 21 day is, see if it holds it or see if there's more retracement to be had. Now, what to do over in tech where the Nasdaq has been really trading in a range since March 5th, but it is holding above its prior breakout level. So could it be gearing up for another one? Well, tech's different. Tech will go into in the trenches because, you know, you, you couldn't be long the, the queues in, and out of perform because of what took place with Apple. But then we'll also talk about Apple, how it might have shifted. So overall, I think in tech, you're going to have to do some homework with individual stocks in order to find, you know, the or create the alpha there. And we'll go into that a little bit later in the show. Yeah, and we'll dive into a lot more tech coming up. But over in metals, could money be rotating now into gold? No, what's funny is um, on that jobs report, gold should have probably got hit more and it didn't and it wound up holding up decently well so today gold is gapping up some would also think that gold would be up a lot more than it is based on all the hoopla that you know this uh, whole scenario is getting so i would say for gold if you are long it you know you, you trim a little bit on the open and if you're looking to get long it don't just chase it wait to see if the gap could hold for the first 60 minutes or so you look at the chart here you will see that you know, here is that longer term support that we wound up holding the macro support. Here is that intermediate trend that broke to the downside. So at this point, you know, it's going to be opening above the 21 day, something it hasn't done since it broke this intermediate support or this pattern here. So I think if it could gap up and, and hold, that'll show you something different. And the next level to measure would be the 50 day around 158, which also closes the gap back from uh, you know, March 14th. Does it still seem to you like it's still lacking some sustainable power? Mm -hmm. I would have thought it would have been screaming higher, you know, but, but maybe that's good for people who want to get in gold because they don't have to, you know, pay up too much. Right. You know, the GLD, I think, is up like a dollar. So if it opens up a dollar, closes up two, then you, there's a you know, decent trade in gold. If it opens up a dollar and closes up 50 cents, then you had to be long it overnight, which didn't give you clear cut signs for. All right. OK, well, let's check in on oil. Also, the OIH has been in an uptrend. It seems like it's running into some resistance, though, here. So <laughs> we'll be able to break above it. It's interesting. This group has been the last to go each time. And every time we've been trying to expand our horizons to look for other things to do for the rally to broaden out, you know, I, I get some exposure to some of these names and then that's when we correct. Should just stick with the leaders and then get more more into cash when they don't work. But, you know, the OAH is you look here, um, it did have a somewhat of a, of a clean breakout. Uh, what was that Thursday? And then even with the down market, we had a little follow through on Friday. So I would say as long as it holds above this 4314, you could stay with it. You know, um, in quick hits, I'll talk about Slumberger because that's the one that I went with. But a lot of these look very similar where you had um, a nice day to break out. 
some follow through on Friday. So hopefully you trim some into this two day move in. And if you still have some on, you know, just map out some key levels. I'd like to see Schlumberger at least hold, just say what, this uh, 78.94 to, to then have some continuation. All right, well, coming up, we're gonna go in the trenches with high beta tech, but first a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. I'm Mark Sperling, Director of Trading with T3 Trading Group and contributor to T3 Live. Do you trade on your own, but you wish you enjoyed the benefits of a large trading floor? With the T3 Live virtual trading floor, we deliver that experience to you on your computer. On the VTF, you can follow the long and short positions of experienced professional traders like myself, Scott Redler, and others, and listen to our live radio stations as we navigate the markets. In addition, you get the added value of a large community of sophisticated and like-minded traders. Your membership to the virtual trading floor also includes access to our two very popular newsletter products, Off the Charts and the Price Point Sheet at no additional cost. In my opinion, joining the room will be the best trading decision you will ever make. I would like to invite you to begin your membership with a seven day free trial. To get started, visit t3live.com and click on the virtual trading floor tab. Have a great day and I look forward to seeing you in the VTF. We're back and going in the trenches with high beta tech. Now Google put in a new high on March 6th, but it's been selling off ever since. And it was down of course on Friday, so should we expect more downside today? I think today is, is a day of opportunity for Google because if you remember the last time I really had a, a price point on it, it was like 805, 807 for that move, and it took it to 844. And during that entire move, you know, it started to get the, the curse of the $1,000 price target. Every time it feels like it got a, a higher price target, it would gap up and then go lower, not the type of action you want to see. So today, with the futures lower, you look at the chart, I think there's some opportunity. The last time you had a nice clean move was right around here, and that's when it broke above this like 805, 808, and then, you know, got very faulty up here. You know, had no traction on every upgrade. So then it lost the eight day. And I think I even tweeted on Friday saying, you know, if we see a down open, you know, on Monday into the 21 day, that's your spot to look for an entry. So here we are, you know, fast forward. Um, I think it's very important, you know, to see if, you know, it's going to be opening below the 21 day. You know, to see it's, it's got a hold today. Today, it needs to open lower, go positive, and that would be something positive for Google. So for me, that's flat Google. I'm going to look for, you know, some type of opportunity. The low end of this bar right here is uh, 805. I think it was at 803 this morning. So, you know, giving it a little room because sometimes there's always a heck of a lot of volatility. Um, from 796 to, to 804, 805 ish, this would be a spot to see if you see a divergence to buy some for it to go negative to positive, and then we'll figure out what the next stage for Google is. But today, I think you know, everyone likes getting excited about buying Google into the momentum. Now's the time that if you sold that momentum, um, that you could look for a new entry, and that's what I'll be looking for in Google today. Well, speaking of a little excitement, has there been a shift in Apple? We finally saw the stock signs of life a little bit after Samsung's big launch the day before. The stock reclaimed its 21-day, closed up 2.6%, so was this the ignition that Apple needed? We shall see, and today I think it'll be a true testament to see whether or not it gets some of its leadership qualities back because, you know, the futures are lower. It's not even down a lot. It's not like $4. So if this were to go from negative to positive and go up, just say, 5 or $6, people are like, wow, look at Apple. People are turning to this. They feel a little bit safer there, you know, which is something we haven't felt in Apple in a long time. So, you know, it still has to prove itself. You look at the chart here on Apple, you'll see it's been in a crazy downtrend ever since it peaked up here, you know, at that 702, lost a 21-day, lost a 50-day, broke this trend line, blah, 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 all the way down to where we are now. So if you look closely, last week, you know, I, I tweeted and talked about getting long it somewhere around uh, 435. And, you know, you had a nice clean breakout on Friday. Okay, it broke above 440. The low is 437. The high is 444. So I would say the longer it stays now above 437, the higher the probability you could, you know, stay with it and maybe even get an extra trade through 444 for it to somewhat hit, you know, 455. And then the, and then the real test will be the 50-day that comes in around 464. So to me, I'm going to be looking to see if there's more opportunities. I am long Apple. I do have a call spread, and I'll see if I can add to it today, you know, for cash flow and use the down open as, a, as an opportunity. Well, for all those Apple watchers out there, we know there's a lot of you guys. <laughs> How big of today a day is today for Apple? Um, I don't think it's like mo monumental, but it'd be another step in the right direction. Apple took a few steps in the right direction last week, you know, so this would be another one to, to breed some confidence because there's been such a lack of confidence in that, right. in that stock. All right, well, let's talk LinkedIn, which retraced 1.3% on Friday into its eight day, which is not violated since its earnings gap. So can it find some support at this level again now? 
I'm going to get into LinkedIn and Netflix kind of together because okay. we talked about, you know, signs that maybe we're getting a little tired. Last week, you know, we isolated two setups. One was LinkedIn and one was Netflix. LinkedIn, we talked about getting through its upper flag for an additional cash flow trade, which wound up working out pretty well. But then something happened. Goldman Sachs came out and upgraded them. I think I sold my LinkedIn. You sort of lead the virtual trade floor above 180 into the uptrend and then closing the lows. And then Friday got even more downside follow through. So right there, typically not saying it's the end of the world, but you know, on, on an upgrade by a Goldman Sachs that gets sold, you know, you're like, okay, that doesn't really make too much sense. But anyway, here was that pivot that was good. That was viable at 178, went as high as um, 184. And now we're down to 177. We're probably going to lose the eight day. I think it is worth a look. You know, this has been a leadership stock that you've been able to buy on dips and right around here, around 174 ish, you know, that's big support. And then you have the 21 day, which, you know, Google's already seeing, you know, coming in right here around 168. So I think I will probably test a little bit of LinkedIn, some coming in flatted around this support. And if it's really that strong, it should hold. But then ultimately, I think that this is going to be that line in the sand. And if you're not on LinkedIn and you're looking for an entry and you didn't chase excitement, this will be a, a key spot. But first, you know, this is the one to look at right there. So how does LinkedIn's story compare then to Netflix? Dropped almost 2% on Friday. Because Netflix also had one of those add-on buys. Um, it, our, last week it gapped up, you know, the, the story with Facebook, and I believe the price was like 186, 187. And some guys played it really well, made some good money. And then the next day it opened down and that area really wasn't buyable, which in a strong tape it should have been. So that gave you another sign that some momentum was leaving and, you know, not end of the world, but remember this tight pattern as it came back to the 21 day, it gapped above this price point, which was like 186, 187, went as high as 195. And then the following day, you know, it, it, it really matched it. And then on Friday went below it. And now it's probably opening into this area. So not, you know, not the most powerful action. So that right there could have given you some clues to, to lighten up at the hedges. So at this point, I think this 176 to 177 is very big for this stock. So on this down open, you know, this is something to give us clues on whether or not, you know, we get really hurt because if they start really letting these things fall apart, you know that, you know, this, this correction could last a little bit longer than, you know, the pentacles want. Right. Okay. Well, rounding out our look at tech here, Amazon finished down one and a half percent on Friday, gave up its key moving averages again. So what are the key levels to know for Amazon? This also last week, you know, it was downgraded and with, on a downgrade, usually when things are strong, it blows it off a little bit, closes off the low, it you know, it closed it on the, almost the dead lows and then had fall through, you know, on Friday. So this too started bending a little bit last week and I don't have a position here either after it tried to break out. You know, you look here at the chart, here's the high from earnings. And then remember this upper level flag, it tried breaking through, couldn't. And then on that downgrade, pretty much gave it up really quickly. Lost the eight, the 21 day, closed near the lows on Friday. So, you know, today there could be an opportunity here in Amazon. It's going to be coming into bigger support. Bigger support here is right around, you know, 255. But again, like if this stock comes into the support and blows through it, you'll know that, you know, there is momentum leaving some of these momentum names. So I think watching Amazon, LinkedIn, Netflix, even Google, you know, it's going to give you some clues on whether or not, you know, money wants to stay with risk on or not. All right, well, time for some quick hits here. Let's talk Facebook retraced nearly one and a half percent on Friday, this after a four day sell off. So more downside in store. Uh, this one, you know, it was a lot weaker than I would have thought. You know, we talked like two weeks ago about perhaps, you know, it was getting back in shape, take the 50 day, but it got rejected. So for me, I am still long Facebook. I'm long a lot less than I had when it was acting better. You know, so for me, if you take it, just look at the chart here. This is my line in the sand right here, this low. This is a 2634. That's probably where we are. I'll give it a little bit. I'll, I'll give it the first few minutes of trade today to see if it holds in there. Um, you know, actually you could probably, oops, let me get my little line here. There it is. Um, you know, because it's opening below that pivot, I'll probably give it to this area. Overall, it failed to take out this resistance. It failed to close above it. You know, really, you know, I would say disappointing trade and they happen. That's why you don't have one position. You have eight or nine. Last time it broke above it. It had a really nice move when it went to the highs here and now it's just faulty and and I still don't think the highs of the year are in, but I will be out of it if we close below 26 today. And Bank of America outperformed the market on Friday with a 3.8% gain. Overall, the stock has been acting well and seems like it'll be interesting to see what it does today. Yes, because it did close strong. You know, they announced their 5 billion share buyback or what, what not, that whole package. Um, so for me, I've been trying to be long this thing. I've been long at probably 90 something percent of the time since 
uh, months ago. I still have some. And I'm not going to be in such a rush to add on the down open, but I, I'd like to see it settle. And I would say for it to stay really strong, if you look at this chart and make it easy for me to stay with it, I would think that you know uh, the, the eight day holds here or a, a decent part of this gap. The gap does start at a 12.35. I think it's a little bit below that now. So I would say you know this move 12.20 would be really nice. Hold 12.20. I might even add some at 12.20 and then go a little sideways. And I think it continues. It's been a long run since you know this buyable area around eight. This buyable area around 9.95. And then you know you did have a nice buyable pullback into support. So. To, to, to go sideways here and, and rest above 12 and change, I don't think it's such a bad thing. Well, Morgan Stanley had a good day too on Friday, gained 3.5%, got back above all key moving averages. So where's its next resistance? Well, this is going to be, a little, it's a little different for me because I entered the position on Friday. It's not like I've been riding it out and I have gains and this and that, you know, because I thought the banks were acting better. Goldman Sachs opened lower, went positive. Morgan Stanley, that's been a laggard. You know, when laggards start to go at the very, very end, you know, unfortunately, it can get complicated. So for this one, um, it did have a clean break. It closed near the highs. I would say, you know, for me to stay with this thing, um, I'd like to see it hold above um, this 2277. You know, I hope it holds a little higher. I'd like to see it hold some of Friday's gains and show some relative strength. That would, you know, get me really excited about it. But overall, I think this 2277 is key here. If that were to give way, I'd be done with Morgan Stanley and probably be upset because you know, the stock just always seems to get me. <laughs> well, we mentioned Schlumberger earlier. Let's pull the chart of that back up because we did see some nice action out of the stock in the last two sessions. Um, what are the key levels to know here? See, this at least, you know, was good for trim and trail. Uh, on Thursday, when money went to the OHs, I got a pretty decent size. And then we opened down on Friday, and I'm like, you know what? It's nice to see, you know, Schlumberger go from negative to positive. So, you know, once it went from negative through uh, Friday's high of 78.84 gave you a little follow through. So here is your day and a half active cash flow move if that's what you're looking for. So Trim and Trail had me sell some into that, but I still have some. But so now I feel comfortable because I, I booked a nice trade. But now in order for me to stay with it, because I'm not a big Schlumberger investor, I was just looking for money to rotate in a, in a strong tape. So if this tape doesn't stay strong, you know, I'd probably get out of it. And you know, I'll give it a little bit more room um, on, on a, what was that, 78. 48, which was Friday's low. So if we break this area, I'll probably just get away from it. And then I'll just figure out, you know, when I want to put more risk on based on market complexion. And we talked a decent amount about MGM last week. Seems like it's at a tricky spot right now. Around, it's been trading around the big resistance level of 1320. So how should we navigate that? This too turned into uh, like a quick hit where, you know, the, the rally was broadening out. There were some nice tight patterns and this ignited, you know, on the, on the KKR news. And I still have some. You know, I don't have the same amount I had when it broke out above this area around 1270. But overall, you know, it, it held a decent amount of it. I would say, you know, I'll give this to about 1270. If this starts to lose 1270-ish, then I'm probably just going to be like, you know what? I don't feel like having all these outside positions. The market could be in corrective phase, and I'll be more tactical versus portfolio approach. But, you know, if it continues to hold, just say, above 13 or 1270, I'll keep it on. If you know, weakness persists across the board and we don't snap back quickly, then I'm going to take some positions down and I'm going to turn back to actively trading or day trading, so to speak. Yes, you can make money by having a little risk down. But if we hold in there, you know, I'll, I'll stay with a multiple set of positions. And right now it's nine. And on today's recap, we'll see how many I have left after today's action. Yes. And speaking <laughs> of today's action, Cyprus is likely to dominate our headlines for the rest of the day. What will you be paying attention to as you head into trading today? Again, I'm going to pay attention to the levels. You know, we isolated some really nice levels in the S&P. You know, I think that 1540-ish area is going to be where we open around. And then you have the 21-day at 1534 with that 1530. I want to see if anything can go green. You know, can some stocks go green for cash flow or can some groups help lead us off our lows? And then, you know, also look at some of those high beta names that started to lose momentum last week. Do they get crushed? Today, with this money that left them at higher prices, come back and support them and keep things in stride. So there's going to be a lot of things to look at, a lot of maneuvers to be had. But, you know, don't crawl under a rock because if you do, you're never going to be able to find the opportunity with the volatility. You want to embrace volatility and you do so with a plan, with tactics and just honor stops and no losses happen. But don't turn them into much bigger losses if you don't have to. Well said, Scott. All right. Happy trading, everyone. Have a great Monday. Hi, I'm Sean Hendelman of T3 Live. 
where we train, coach, and mentor traders in order to help you put your money to work with confidence. The T3 Live approach is a blueprint for you to recognize, adapt, and ultimately take advantage of different market conditions. To begin your training with T3 Live, we would like to offer you the opportunity to enroll in our free 30-day online home study course. Fill in your name and email address, and I'll see you on the other side.